actually, I think, I think we'll just continue the conversation uh, with you, Brett, and um, uh, dig in a little bit more to Yahoo, what, what Yahoo's doing in this space, whether it's the legacy Bright Roll business or Yahoo's sort of legacy business itself. You could just talk about sure. um, where you guys are focusing and, and what you see as the big opportunities. Yep. Um, so the, the easiest way to think about Yahoo with respect to, to advertising and, and video uh, specifically is around three areas. One is, is technology, so advertising technology in particular. So um, after the acquisition of Bright Roll, um, at the end of last year, um, Yahoo has been heavily investing in its advertising technology stack. Um, and uh, we announced at Adweek uh, a bit ago that Bright Roll will be the brand uh, that essentially speaks for and rolls up all Yahoo ad technology. So that includes not just video, which was Bright Roll's heritage and specialty, but, but display and, and some native as well. Um, <clears throat> so within that ad tech world, there's the Bright Roll DSP and Bright Roll Marketplace. Uh, which are uh, and will remain agnostic platforms that uh, really source the, the majority of their traffic off of Yahoo properties. And that was sort of the change in what Yahoo had been doing with its internal ad stack before. Um, you know, part and parcel to that is the acquisition of Flurry, which gives Yahoo access to uh, over 2 billion uh, mobile devices and, and 650,000 apps, a really tremendous footprint there. Um, so that's one thing is sort of the ad stack. Um, the second area uh, that is relevant to all of this is, of course, Yahoo's publishing um, capability. Um, not only the homepage and sports and, and finance and lifestyle verticals, which are, are you know, Yahoo's traditional and current strengths, but also um, big events. Uh, we do um, a lot of concerts with Live Nation. We have deals with a lot of the sports leagues. I'm sure many of you, most of you saw um, the NFL live stream, which was closely watched and we thought was a really proud day for Yahoo and for digital streaming. Um, and then the third area, um, and I should actually mention too there is, is we have a lot of footprint on connected televisions mm -hmm. in the connected living room, both through our technology and our content. Um, and then the third area which is relevant and, and speaks to the previous conversation is Yahoo's data. Um, one of the big changes over the last couple of months that Yahoo's been making is making its data available outside of its walled garden, so to speak, to preferred partners. So uh, there are really only a few companies on the planet that have the depth of scale and the breadth of scale that Yahoo does, uh, over a billion uh, users globally use our various communications and, and content services. Um, Two billion phones, as I mentioned, 165 billion daily events are tracked through Yahoo's internal DMP through all of our services. Uh, we can now make that available to preferred partners, both sellers and buyers, as well as strategic partners, mm -hmm. um, to uh, inform their own buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And that's, we think, really unique. So you talk about um, connected TV and um, all of the data that you have across many devices, Flurry, that's a massive um, asset for you now. How do these kind of come together to bring a connected living room experience? Is that something that um, you're being asked about by, by your clients or some a place that you're headed towards in, ter in terms of, you know, as <coughs> users are um, using many devices at the same time as they're watching television? Is that, is that an area that you guys are working towards? Yeah, without question. Yeah, yes, we're um, being asked about it, as I'm sure uh, everyone is, and yes, uh, we're, we're heading further in that direction. So, um, you know, we really use sort of data as a leveling entity across the various uh, pieces of our footprint. Um, and we look at the goals of a given uh, marketer or agency uh, client holistically. So, you know, some of the areas that are of particular interest in the connected living room are, you know, obviously the entertainment vertical. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the underappreciated um, aspects of video advertising is that a lot of video advertising is for other video content. You know, 20% of ads on TV are for other TV shows. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, some of the early interest is certainly coming from a lot of entertainment brands trying to figure out how do I keep up with my consumers? How do I continue to market my content? Um, and you know, one of the ways that we do that is through our various data assets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cross-screen graphs are going to become critical. Mm -hmm. This notion we talked about yesterday of whether it was deduplicated or unduplicated or whatever the term is. Um, you know, Yahoo's built a tremendous internal cross-screen graph um, that's you know, well into nine digits and we expect that to you know, be approaching so close to all of our users um, you know, by middle of next year. And so that gives us and our clients the ability to you know, if you're trying to market content, follow a given consumer across the variety of screens that we have access to. Mm -hmm. um, and so we think that that's something that's really unique. Um, you know, auto is another big area of investment um, and, and sort of traditional strength for Yahoo. Um, 
And so, so you know, the, the access to the connected living room, we feel like, is just part of the broader feedback loop. Brightroll has been serving ads into connected TVs as a marketplace since late 2012. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Yahoo's had technology in the connected living room for many, many years, powering a number of the major OEMs. Um, and so, yeah, it's really a matter of sort of bringing all of that together, trying to understand users' patterns and mm -hmm. behaviors across those variety of screens, mm -hmm. and then making that audience available uh, to marketers wherever they are. Mm -hmm. Excellent.